Welcome to this lecture on recruitment. Now, recruitment, important topic, features quite often. Most taxpayers that claim capital allowances will encounter recruitment, um, and also a lot of those who just claim deductions. So, let's quickly talk about it. So, what is a recruitment? The first thing that you need to understand is this recruitment is just another word for recovery. Now, if you can recall, a recruitment will be added to your gross income. So that's the first thing I want you to understand is you get taxed on it. It's a, it increases your tax liability. Now what is a recoupment? Right, so remember when you go and you claim a machine, a manufacturing machine. So let's say you buy a manufacturing machine and that manufacturing machine had a cost of 1 million rands in year one of that machine you claimed a 40% allowance so 400,000 rands and in year two you claimed 20% allowance under section 12c now at the end of year two we decide to sell this so right and what I want you to see is assume that we sell it for a million rands as well so I'm just for now I want you to see we bought it for a million and now we are selling it for a million now SARS gave us these allowances over here, the 400,000 to 200,000 section 12C. Why did they give it to us? Because we went and we spent money to buy a capital asset of a million rands. So SARS says, we give you allowances because you've incurred a cost. If I now go and sell this asset, that is a way for me of recovering my original cost, or part of it. In this case, I've recovered the exact amount. So what SARS says is, if we gave you these allowances because you incurred that cost, if you recover that cost, like you did here, then we want those allowances back. And in this case, the recoupment would be, and I don't want you to worry too much about the calculation, I will see that in a second, but in this case, the recoupment would be the 600,000 rands. Right, so this is my rands column. The 600,000 rands that was given. So I would have claimed that 600,000 rands, these allowances, I would have claimed this each year as a deduction. But now because I've recovered my cost, I must recover those allowances by recouping it. Right, so that's basically what a, rec uh, a recoupment does. Now guys, this is the one we see the most often with machines and things like that. But please understand, this applies to any deduction. So let's say, for example, um, X Limited claims a bad debt deduction in year two of 10,000 rands. So, uh, let's say there was a, a debtor went bad, it's a bad debt, so we claimed section 11i deduction. You know when we claim the deduction like that, basically in rands. In year three, Year three, the debtor returns and pays. So in year three, the debtor comes and he pays us that 10,000 rands that we owed him. Now, when we originally sold, the original selling price, we included it, 10,000 rands. Then it was a bad debt. Now they're paying it back to us. Now, this is another recoupment because SARS gave us a deduction, section 11i. And that was because we claimed a bad debt. So why did they give us the deduction? Because of section um, 11i. Why did they give us the section 11i? Because we had a bad debt. So now, if we recover the bad debt, which is what we do in year 3, then we recover the reason why they gave us the 10,000 rands. So in year 3, there will be a recoupment of 10,000 rands again. So I want you to understand that recoupment doesn't just have anything to do with machines or things like that. It has to do with deductions and allowances. And if you recover the deduction or allowance, then there will be a recoupment. Right, so that's basically what we discussed there. Now guys, here comes the golden rule. And if you followed what, we, what I just explained, this should seem logical to you. Now the golden rule, you'll hear me talking about every now and then. If I talk about the golden rule, you must remember that as well. And that is that a recoupment can never exceed the allowances or deductions that were granted by SARS. So what does that mean? It means this 
400,000 and 200,000 that SARS gave us of that machine, your recruitment can never be more than that. SARS can't recover more from you than what they gave you. You can only recover what you gave someone. If you get more than that, then you're not making a recovery, then you're making a gain. And SARS doesn't make a gain on us, they can only recover. So, they can, the recruitment can be less than the allowances or deductions granted by SARS, but it can never exceed the amount. So, it might be, I want you to understand, that in this machine example we gave here, they gave us allowances of 400,000, 200,000, so 600,000, and we rec recouped 600,000. It could be that you sold it for less than a million rands, and that 600,000 is only 500,000, for example. That is possible. So SARS will say, if you don't recover the full cost, then we won't recover our full allowances, basically. But you'll see when you look at, you look at the example, so it works out like that. Now, just as just a reminder, I'm not going to spend too much time here, just that recoupments are included in gross income. Gross income has a special, in, um, the gross income definition has those special inclusions of the gross income. Paragraph N of that tells you that you must include in a recoupment. So it says, you must include any amount which in terms of any other provision of this act is specifically required to be included in the income. And that amount must... And then we go here in two. In the case of any amount required to be included in taxpayers' income in terms of section 8.4, and section 8.4, this is the recoupment section, they say it must be the amount that has been received or accrued from a source within the Republic, notwithstanding the amounts that may have been covered outside of the Republic. So all they're trying to say here is if you make a recoupment, then it doesn't matter if it's inside or outside of the Republic, it will be treated as if it's from the Republic. So in other words, you will always be taxed on it. Right, then section 84A, this is where they tell us in the act to do the recoupment. Now what I want you to see as I'm looking at this is that they do not tell you here how to do the calculation. They just say include the recoupment. So section 84, guys, important is the recoupment section, it says. They shall be included in the taxpayer's income. All amounts allowed to be deducted or set off under the provisions of section 11 to 20. Right? So section 11 is all of our deductions, general deduction formula, section 11A, section 11I, bad debts, section 11J, provision for doubt all of those things. To section 20. So section 13 is included there. That's our allowance sessions on buildings, the factory buildings, section 13 quin, section 13 sex. All of those are included. So sections 11 to 20, right? Other important ones for you, section 24i, section 24j. And they tell you here, except for certain sections. Right, so see which of those? Section 11k, those things are not included. Right, so, okay guys, so I'm going to clean that out, those sections, and then I'm going to just restart this for us, just to make it read like a sentence. So, they shall be included in the taxpayer's income, all amounts allowed to be deducted, under sections 11 to 20, whether in the current or any previous year of assessment, which have been recovered or recouped during the current year of assessment. Right, so up to there, can you see what it says? So it says, you will include in the taxpayer's income all amounts allowed to be deducted under sections 11 to 20 in the previous year or in the current year, which have been recovered or recouped during the year of assessment. So they just say, if you recouped an amount, you must include it in your income. Now I wanted to see there guys, that don't tell you how to do the recoupment, they don't tell you, because it's a concept that you need to understand, that they're recovering past allowances. So I will show you a way in which to do it, but please understand the app doesn't tell you how to do it. Right, then I just give you here some provisos, provided that the provisions of this paragraph shall not apply, if the amount has been included in gross income, in terms of paragraph JA of the definition of gross income. Now, we'll talk about paragraph JA, or you'll look at paragraph JA when you are looking at trading stock. Basically, this is when, when a taxpayer manufactures own 
trading stock. Basically, there's a rule that says if you manufacture your own trading stock, your own assets, it doesn't matter what you do with those assets, you must always treat it as trading stock. Okay, so what does that mean? Let's say I, buy, I build computers, um, I manufacture computers and I sell them, and I decide to manufacture a computer and use it myself as properly plant and equipment. Now, usually that's a conversion from trading stock to asset. For paragraph JA, if you've made it yourself, it remains trading stock. Okay, but again, you study that in trading stock. Or any amounts which are included in section 19. So basically what they're saying is, they say, yeah, you must do a recoupment and calculate it included in gross income, but don't do it for paragraph JA because that has its own rules, and don't do it for section 19 because that has its own rules as well. Now, this slide over here is just a reminder to tell you, remember guys, how does recoupments interact with capital gains tax? It is when you're calculating proceeds that you say selling price less recoupment. Right, why? Because that's part of the selling price that has already been taxed. The same reason why we deduct the recoupment is why we deduct the allowances claimed from the base cost of the asset if the asset was after 1 October 2001. Now, this is going to be your format for a recoupment calculation and you'll see if you look at your lecture examples and so forth this is what we use all the time and I would encourage you to use the same thing unless you have proven to yourself every single time that you do a question that your way of doing it also gives you the exact same answer otherwise use my method right so what you'll always do is you will start by calculating the tax value of assets. So that's the cost of the asset, less allowances claimed. Now, you must say less allowances, and you'll do it for the prior years. You'll break, show that separately, and you'll show the current year in a separate way. The reason for that, for the current year amount, why you show separately, is this is my RANDS column is that that amount for the current year must also be deducted. That's your allowance, so section 12C. This gives us an amount which is called our tax value. So cost less allowance is our tax value. Then you are going to see we use, we say selling price limited to original cost. Now guys, the reason why we do this, this is to make your recoupment always comply with the golden rule which says that it can never exceed the past allowances that were granted. Okay, now basically what this limited to original cost means is you can also instead of saying selling price limited to original cost you can also say this is the lower of selling price or original cost. Right, and that thing calculates our recoupment. So guys, let's use a simple example. There was a machine that cost a million rands, and it is now sold for 1.2 million rands. And I'm just going to say used for two years. So this is just a simple example. So the cost will be a million rands. You would have claimed 400,000 rands in year one, and 200,000 rands in year 2, and that's 200,000 rands you must claim as a deduction. That will leave you with a tax value of 400,000 rands. The selling price is 1.2 million rands. Now guys, just see what happens here. If I say 1.2 million rands, so I say 1.2 minus 400,000, that gives me 800,000 rands. My total past allowances was 600,000 rands. What does the golden rule say? Can't be more than my past allowances. Now, this is why we do this rule where we say selling price is 1.2 million rands, original cost is 1 million rands. So you use the lower of the two. Right, so if you use the lower of the two, which is what? The original cost in this case, a million rands. You say a million minus 400,000 is 600,000 rands recoupment. What is my total recoupment or allowances in the past? 600,000 rands. So that works out. Right, and that's 600,000 then goes into my RANDS column. If you sold it for less 
Then it's original cost, so 800,000 rands. Selling price, 800,000. Original cost, a million. The lower of the two is now the 800,000. So 800 minus 400 is 400,000 rands. So I had 600,000 in the past. I've only recovered 400,000 rands. Why? Because my original cost was a million rands and I've only recovered 800,000. So I didn't recover my full original cost. So SARS does not recover its full allowances that were granted.